This is FNN with Dick Gazinia, Conalingus, Lincoln Anacock with the weather, and Harry P. Ness on sports. Good evening. I'm Dick Gozinha. Harry Pines is not here tonight. He's getting a morphine drip for his gonorrhea. And now, Conalingus with tonight's top story. Did God mushroom stamp the planet? Santos Frito claims that he wanted to remove a forest from his property and build a reservoir for his farm. After pricing out what would be a ridiculous amount of money, Frito could simply just not afford it. He prayed to God for help, and the next day he said his prayers were answered as a giant penis came from the clouds and stamped out the forest. Neighbors actually claimed that they heard a loud boom and said the only reason why they didn't call the police is because Frito makes some damn fine peach moonshine. I had heard the same thing. I want to try some of this peach moonshine. Scientists have determined that they are 90% certain that people between the ages of 16 and 28 who are armed with 50% of the knowledge are now 100% geniuses. They argue that opinion and fact do equate to genius. Following this announcement, millennials all over the world denounced the decision and took to Twitter using the hashtag, NotMyDecision. Seems like we're having more unrest in the streets with today's young people. You know what bothers me about young people? What is that, Connell? They're young. That is a problem. They're naive. That is a problem, too. They don't listen. They always have their damn headphones in their ears. That is correct. What bothers me the most is that they're always buried in their world of Minecraft. That game is a problem. That is. That, that, that game is the devil, I think, for once we agree on something. Finally. Prince calls back from what looks to be the heavens. A man in Minnesota claims that Prince touched him the other day from beyond the grave as he walked home a bizarre purple rain fell from the sky. The gentleman proclaimed that it was a beautiful purple color, almost as bright as the rainbow and translucent as if he could see through it. He thought it was a sign from the late pop star. In related news, however, a university has replated 1,000 of its new drug detection chemical, which reacts by turning a positive user's urine purple. Makes life pretty interesting. I imagine. Did he arrive at the appointment in his little red Corvette, I wonder? And now, the next story. News from Connecticut Capitol Hill today says there will be a tax to be unveiled on the Connecticut population. It is called the tax tax. An additional 4% tax will be attached to your current Connecticut state income tax, in which will be taxed on again and then rolled over to add another 4% tax onto your current tax. All money raised by the tax tax will go to the Save Denim Malloy from Incarceration Fund. I think this is a fantastic idea. Well, I just got taxed the other day for swearing um, too much. So, uh, I mean, if they're going to add another tax to it, well, fuck. How terrible is that of you as an American to go against taxation? Well, I, I, I had this T-shirt that um, somebody sent me. It was taxation is theft. I've heard that movement. I do not agree. Taxation is wonderful. It pays for our mm. roads, which are potholed and crumbling. It pays for our schools, which are teaching our children that fidget spinners are the way to focus. It is paying for our police, who routinely beat the snot out of our youth. But damn it, taxes are good. Let, I, you know, I propose... If you're listening, Governor Malloy, I propose an additional tax tax onto the tax tax of another 4% to be rolled onto the 4%. The expressions provided by my partner, Dick, are exactly that. They're Dick. <laughs> now, Connell's next story. In the latest news, Channing Tatum is gay. That is all. Sorry. Allow me to check that against TMZ. Mm -hmm. 
Ah. Uh huh. One moment. It is confirmed Channing Tatum is gay. TMZ has reported that no less than an hour ago. Good call by you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. In other news, 2016 presidential hopeful Gary Johnson announced today that he has plans to book his next family vacation. His destination is Aleppo, Syria. When asked about the strange choice of travel plans, Mr. Johnson said, It's about time I find out where this place is. I've been feeding my dog Aleppo for years, and she's a big fan. Good job, Mr. Johnson. I like that idea. It's like that crazy old lady in the in the um the the the, the pond that kept feeding those gators. Mm-hmm. Betty White, remember when she was feeding those gators? The same idea. That's good on you, woman. Good on you. And let me tell you, Aleppo T-bone steak flavor is fantastic. Before I was in news, a little young Richard Gazinia worked at the Alpo factory, and it was up to me to taste the flavors to make sure what they were putting on the label was, in fact, what they were putting on the label. It could very much be what was on the label. Sometimes the chicken and rice did not taste like chicken and rice. I My Oscar Mayer had 14 names. <laughs> it must not have been from America, sir. No, sir, it wasn't. <laughs> A man finally sees after using his glasses. An Alabama man refused to wear his glasses for, well, it seems like over two decades. His family eventually said, you're going to go blind if you do not use your prescription glasses. Eventually, this could happen, and the gentleman could not eventually see, and as he crashed on his way to Walmart one day, he eventually had to wear his glasses once again and was able to see. What a feel-good story. Doesn't it make the you Lord just... The Lord works it in does, mysterious it, it ways. It does. It really does. When you listen to your family, and your family is absolutely on your side on all these cases. Family usually does stick together, in most cases. In podcast news, the Loking Jabroni Show producer Eddie Focus is on the hot seat this week for allegedly sampling audio from other podcasts and replacing the audio from his own show with these stolen sound clips. Focus released a short statement with only one line of text, and that statement read... I was framed! Leave Kanye alone. I've heard of this man. I've always thought he'd done incredible work. What happened to Eddie Focus? He started dealing with uh, with Kanye West, and unfortunately, the, you know, you mess with Kanye West, and, 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 and it goes down. It just, you're, everything goes down. My heart goes out to him. I, I hope he finds a better place than, than hanging with Kanye West. May we say a prayer for Eddie Focus... And his family, his wife, Auda, and his child, In. Welcome back to FNN. I'm Dick Gazinia. Hi, I'm Connell Lingus. And Connell, I have to tell you, your glass looks pretty full. Thank you. My cup runneth under, unfortunately. It is half. So I'd like to bring in Wheat Wilson, who is the associate director on FNN. And during live broadcasts, he is also known as the Beer Getter. The Beer Getter. Some newscasts that you see, they're drinking coffee, scotch, Everclear. Here on FNN, Everclear. we prefer beer. So, wheat, thank you very much. Ah, look at that. I haven't seen head like that since the 80s at a Bon Jovi concert. I'm not saying it was me. But I'm saying I saw it. You're not into that. I well, I am not. I'm happily married. Sometimes. Ask my third wife. Do you have a story for us, sir? My volume was too loud. That's oh. the story of the hour now. <laughs> if you were listening to those scoundrels, Loki and Jabroni, you would owe our audience a beer. Those scoundrels. They are scoundrels. They are scoundrels. But our audience is way too refined for that, that is kind correct. of <coughs> drivel. Director Hack Meyer has decided to chime in. How are you today, Hack? I'm great. You look great. Not as good as you look. <laughs> That's hard to do, my friend. That's hard to do. So since our friend Gonorrhea Dripperls. Ah, poor Harry Penis. <laughs> Will not be here today uh, with his unfortunate run-in with the Vietnamese hooker. Oh, well, that's what happens when you befriend strippers in a strange country. I think we'll go right into the sports news. I like sports, as do you. (laughs) 
Tom Brady to show his sausage. That's right, New England fans. You've been waiting for this one for a long time, haven't you? Tom Brady wouldn't do that. Tom Brady would not do that. Tom Brady is <laughs> going to definitely do that, and it's his new tasty treat that comes 10 in a can. When asked people, why such a so small sausage, Brady was quoted as saying, everything I do, I do it real. T12, baby. T12. What a stand-up guy that Brady he is. is. He is. What a stand-up guy. In other news, Danica Patrick finally found her way to Victory Lane this Sunday in the Geico 500 at Talladega, but it was to celebrate her boyfriend's win. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. won the crash-filled event. Miss Patrick told an unnamed reporter off to the side, quote, the cup is not the only thing Ricky will be chasing in the next few months because he won't be allowed in my Victory Lane anytime soon. Indeed. I actually hear she does carve a Victory Lane. I heard it's quite the uh, tri-oval down there. <laughs> Caution. Oh, what, Caution. I what I wouldn't do to that backstretch, Connell. I bet you would. <laughs> you know me too well. Another Boston news. Big Poppy arrested. Unfortunately for you fans, or for Yankees fans, he was arrested in a case of mistaken identity. Apparently they were looking for Mike Tyson at the time and thought Big Poppy looked like Mike Tyson. Hmm. Interesting. I can see the resemblance. I always thought he looked like Florida from Good Times. By the way, Mike Tyson is still at large. Wow. We, we pray for the capture of Mike Tyson. In Chicago, broom sales have dropped 48% in the last few days in protest of the Cubs being swept by the New York Yankees this weekend. No truth to the rumor that broom sales have gone up 48% in the Bronx. Now Chicago's quite the clean city, and that's and that's with that's with Lis Lester Lister on the mound. Ah yes, John Lester. No matter what hat you wear, my friend, the Yankees still own your ass. <laughs> that is awesome and silly. Yes, all in one. Tiger Woods is in the news again today. This farm, unfortunately, is with our current president. The two supposedly were proceeded down on one of Trump's golf courses when, at around the eleventh hole. Terror bestruck the course. As Trump proceeded to try to run Tiger Woods down with the cart, hit a tree, and then chased him away with a golf club. Caught up with, Tiger Woods was quoted as saying, I guess I just have that effect on people. Hmm. As if he needs any more controversy in his life. Oh, I think we'll see plenty more controversy <laughs> with Mr. Tiger Woods. Probably. And in similar golf news, old-ass John Daly has officially proven the Happy Gilmore theory correct. Winning at golf requires goofy pants and a fat ass. As John held his trophy aloft this weekend, he thanked Callaway Clubs and Burger King Double Whoppers as his training tools for his big win. I am not a big fan of golf. No, not I at all. I play it, but I cannot watch the Golf Channel. Too much polyester for my taste. A gentleman in Alabama has finished a perfect game while eating a chili dog for every bowling pin. You may want to repeat that. Yes, that is right. <laughs> he had a chili dog for every bowling pin that he knocked down with his perfect game. That must be the fattest kid in Alabama. <laughs> that is a big gentleman, people. That is a big gentleman. In other news, that kid's 12 years away from his first and possibly last heart attack. In just a few minutes, we're going to bring in Lincoln Onacock with your weather. He's excited about what's coming up this week. One more thing to bring up before we go to the break is I have a little bit of a public service announcement for all of you folks. Do you like whiskey? Vodka and other spirits? Do you get frustrated at work? Does your job make you want to pull your hair out? Like our producer, Hack Meyer, does every single episode. As you it's can, truth! As you can see, he has a receding hairline, whereas once he had hair down to here. Regardless, what do you do? You hide your alcohol in a big Burger King cup. That's right, kids. You mix four parts of your favorite soft drink with one shot of your favorite spirit. Maybe it's Dr. Pepper and Crown Royal. Maybe it's Sprite and How F and Vodka. How do this? Well, just cr it's going to help you cruise through your day stress-free. Imagine, if you will, 
You've had enough. Your boss has reached the limit of upsetting you, and all you want to do is reach for a tall, frosty, cold, mixed drink. Maybe you like sex on the beach. Maybe you like effing vodka. Maybe you like Jameson whiskey. Four-part soft drink to one shot of your favorite liquor, and you'll be fine. Now, if you're confronted by management, simply state that they're infringing upon your individual liberty and scream like a child. Protests can be arranged, meeting points are being set up all over the town, and you may use the hashtag, whiskey while you work. I love it. We do that often here at FNN. I'm... I'm in fact, our boss, Fred Turner, often... Hashtag whiskey down, while I work. Whiskey while I work. Are we going to lose you for 10 minutes, Connell? <laughs> you might, buddy. You <laughs> might. Keep that tie on, buddy. Hack has spoken. Are we up for a break? I thought we were going into weather. We are going into weather right after this break. Lincoln on a cock will be in front of the big screen telling you about the weather. Hello, I'm Lincoln on a cock with the weather. See this shit? You see this shit? Shit's getting red, isn't it? Yeah, I think we know why it's getting red. Yeah, Nazis. Nazis everywhere. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody who walk up to you and, uh, you know, they uh, don't like what you have to say? <laughs> Punch them in the face. Nazis! That's right. If they disagree with you, they're all Nazis. And all this talk right now about the great President Trump, yeah, about... Talking about the Civil War and the president and everything and and uh, how uh, Andrew Jackson could have stopped the Civil War. Yeah, this is nothing but hate speech. Hate speech against our great leader. And it's got to stop now. And... Racist microaggression. <clears throat> That's right. You can't put up with these microaggressions because that's what they want to do. They want to stop you. They want to keep you down, keep everybody weak. <laughs> but you're on to them. You're on to them. <laughs> Everything that you don't like, there's a good chance. Nazis. That's right. Nazis everywhere. Lincoln, could you focus on the weather, please? We only have 90 minutes. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, it's going to be pretty rainy for the rest of the week. Uh, some shun sign on Friday, scattered showers on Saturday. But um, I think we know why that is. Lincoln? We covered this in the meeting. Thank Not you, Mike. everything is about the Nazis. <clears throat> Can you stick to the weather, please? Yeah, but you don't understand. You don't understand the Nazis. Lincoln, I understand that you get a paycheck from FNN every two weeks. And I also understand that the map behind you is showing weather across this great nation that is not led by Nazis. No, you are see all this red? That's... That's them. You're actually they're, pointing they're, at the green, Lincoln? That's they're, New orga England. they're organizing. Much better. They're getting, they're getting together. Like Now, can you point to Oklahoma and mention the tornadoes, please? There's tornadoes, all right. A tornado of fascism, and it's coming. It's coming. And, and you're all going to thank me. You're all going to thank me for warning you now. Okay, Connell, let's get to the next news story. Lincoln, I'd like to see you in my office, please. Lincoln, I'd like to see you in my office, please. And in new news, Lincoln will be fired. <clears throat> Nazis! Lincoln! The love boat has sank in the Blue Lagoon. Yes, unfortunately, the love boat has went down. The uh, recently repurchased, refurbished, and re-outfitted Love Boat was recently picked up by a millionaire. 
who unfortunately five days later took it on a love cruise and ended up crashing it into a smaller island. And this is why Bill Clinton should not have a boating license. I said the same thing. It's funny. When you originally brought this story to the table earlier this afternoon in the production meeting, I immediately thought Gene Simmons. Then I remembered Gene Simmons is 700 years old and his dick is shriveled and doesn't work anymore. But Bill Clinton, boy for a nickel, what that guy won't do. I agree. Do you remember that podcast we heard Bill Clinton on? He was fantastic. That was was a very, that was, that was classic. Breaking news story. Gene Simmons dead today while doing a concert for the Nazis. Okay, Lincoln. I'm pretty sure you heard hack earlier. I don't know where you are and I don't know what microphone you have. But this needs to stop. We are a serious news organization. Now stop it. You disagree with me. You're a Nazi. While I do have some German descent, I must tell you, I am in no way a Nazi. In fact, I use Velcro shoes, if that makes any difference. I do not tie my shoes in Nazis. In other news, in an effort to change their image globally, the Florida state government has instituted a media blackout for any and all crime stories coming out of their state. Florida Governor Rick Scott says, quote, not every criminal in the Sunshine State is a blithering idiot, which elicited laughter from Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi, and she was heard to mumble horseshit under her breath. Have you heard the one about the guy who tried to have sex with the gator? I did. I heard it did not end well for him. No, not at all. Or the jackass that tried to drive through a Wendy's because he didn't get his chicken McNuggets on time. Or were they just regular chicken nuggets? I think they were. I think I just brand mixed. And this just in, Norwich Rockies kicked ass 12-3. to Three, three game-winning streak. Very nice, Norwich three Rockies. Three game-winning streak. That no, is not bullshit news. That is real news. That is real news. I've had the pleasure of sitting in on some of their games, and they are fantastic. And, if I may say so... Some of those young Rockies look like they've been coached by a fantastic coach in the past. I can see that. He is ugly, though. He's very ugly. No spit curl like me. (laughs) We seem to have breaking news handed to us. This just in, Florida Gator attack by Nazis. Okay, I've had enough. Can someone get Lincoln out? Of the scroll booth, please. He's writing fake, fake news. Not just fake news. He's writing double fake news. I'm looking at you right now. Can you see me? Do you understand? I make more in a week than you make in a year. Get Lincoln out of the booth. Have the rent cops drag him outside, whatever you have to do. I will not have my broadcast tarnished by this Nazi false fear flag, whatever they tell me on the teleprompter bullshit. I apologize for my rant. In beer news, Heineken says they have a bum rap in being this skunk beer. When asked to taste test their own beer, the president said, I ain't having that skunk ass beer. Funniest thing about that whole story is I spent an evening in Boston recently and I sent a friend to the beer stand to get me a beer. He came back with what I like to call the bullet can. It was Heineken, and because I'm not one to turn down free beer or watch my friend waste $12 as I pour it down in front of him, I drank the entire thing. Ew. In similar news, I had diarrhea all day the next day. That is disgusting. Friends do not let friends drink Heineken. Now, I must ask you, have you heard of the Autism Challenge? Yes. The Autism Challenge raised $17 million recently on a local podcast in New England for autism awareness. The $17 million was then taxed incredibly by the government, leaving only $320 to go to the actual charity. When asked about this, Governor Dana Malloy said, hey, I have to fix this deficit somehow. Now, if you ask me, this Governor, Dana Malloy, first of all, who names their child Daniel? His parents, apparently. 
Apparently, his parents were high on LSD when they had young Daniel. Secondly, if you didn't do your job correctly, what would happen to you? Uh, I would say probably get fired, you get would thrown most, out of this network, mister. Much like Lincoln on a cock, and we're hoping that his injuries heal quickly because we need him for the weather. He's the only one that delivers the weather as well as anyone I've ever seen. <clears throat> now, in baseball, when a team underperforms, they fire the manager. Well, this state has underperformed. It's about time we fire our manager. I believe you said the tax, 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 tax was a great idea. I don't recall that. I don't believe that actually happened. I've just been handed this latest news. Do you and your family drink milk? Well, if you do, you just might be a Nazi. Okay, damn it. He's done it again. I'm not looking up to this booth one more time. If you don't remove Lincoln on a cock from these proceedings right now, I am going to throw what my daughter calls a shit fit. Do you, under, do you see these eyes? Taco Bell has admitted to having at least grade B meat in their products. They said, hey, at least our chicken is at least 85% chicken. Our beef so much 80 to 82%. What's funny is I heard that grade B meant it be a horse. It might be a horse <laughs> or it might be a beaver. <laughs> beaver meat does taste good, I must tell you, Connell. Oh, no one knows better than you. <laughs> I'll tell you what. One more thing I'd like to add before we close out tonight's broadcast is just something that's very close to my heart. Folks, if you're going to go out this weekend, do not drink and drive. And if you do drink and drive, make sure your beer is in the cup holder so you don't spill it on the nice outfit that you wore out to the bar to have your fun. And if you're going out to the bar to have your fun this weekend, you find Viking Entertainment. Nothing fake about them. They are the premier DJ and karaoke service in the New England area. Hire them, or Lincoln will come to your house and accuse you of being a Nazi. We would also like to thank Sinners Inc., Sublime Inc., the WWE Shop, King Cooler, Zeet, Zound. Zound. They spell it with three Zs, sir. Z you you it got me last week on the you teleprompter. Snickers, you got me. <laughs> you got me, you Snickers. I home. Amazon, and of course, Swift Tech. Make sure you check out these fantastic people and check out their awesome websites. And speaking of websites, make sure you go to the LokiAndJabroni.com. I've heard fantastic things about them. Speaking of. I've heard they might be Nazis! They're. Lincoln, look, who decided to let this jackass back in the booth? They're up next, gentlemen. We'll see you folks tomorrow. Same time. Same channel. Stay classy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We're the, we're, the, we're the Twerk Brothers. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. I'm Loki. I'm Jabroni. We are Connecticut. Hall of Honor inductees. That's as right. Of, what, a week ago? A week ago. Finally and, got in. And we are the GOAT podcast. Of New England, of, of all England. time, of anywhere. I would only put three sides of the coin. I hope of us. Uh, I hope you guys had fun with the uh, with the little newscast. That, that was fun. Had a good idea. Uh, um, one of the comments I have to bring it up was, "How do you guys? How are you guys doing that with a straight face?" It was not uh, as easy. I, as it I looked. cracked a few times. Yeah. actually. the yeah. Nazis the, made it really hard. No, it's always the fucking Nazis. I it was. It wasn't fun. <laughs> it was. They, they infiltrated our shit. Um, so we usually do this at the beginning, so we're going to do this now at the end. Uh, what's on your mind, man? excited, dude. I am, um, I'm like maybe about three weeks away from having a copy of the Friday the 13th game. Nice. Oh. Oh. I know you guys have been talking about that <laughs> a lot. I'm getting excited for it. I know I got, I got some people out there that are gamers, man. You guys haven't had a chance to really check this game out. Seriously, YouTube it. There is... There's this one video in particular that I think people should check out. He's, he's chasing this one dude, gets into a car and drives away. Like he actually escapes Jason in a car, right? Then Jason starts fucking with this other guy mm -hmm. and then chases him through the woods. As he's chasing this dude through the woods, he actually gets out into an open area. Guess where it is? It's a freaking road. And the guy that originally ran away from Jason in the beginning hits the dude in the car. 
So Jason actually got this dude murdered by chasing another dude into the car that he originally had to pay. Like, you can, like, this murder. This sounds like the tax tax. Dude, you can murder any <laughs> any way you want. Like, if you are, you're, if you're in water, you can drown him. If you are next to a uh, campfire, you can throw him into the campfire. You can put him in a uh, freaking sleeping bag and beat him against a tree, man. There's nothing that you can't do. Um, I heard that there's uh, there's the different skins, obviously, and depending on what you do, uh, Jason's, they'll have different powers and there's a skin from Jason one, Jason 2 and 3 that Jason can run. Yeah. Um then there's part 6, 7 and 8. He it's can't run, but he has his little Jason in space. No, they can't. No. <laughs> Actually, they they had voted. They had voted on it. What Jasons do you want to see? That one didn't win. Jason X didn't win. But from what I understand, um, some of the, the, the later movies, were, which were done by New Line Cinema, there's some issues with those. So they can't do Freddy vs. Jason, and they can't, right. they can't do the, uh, the Friday the 13th remake, Jason. Hmm. Well, that's cheese. Yeah. Licensing. It's all licensing. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's licensing. Like, people ask if Freddy is going to show up, and they just kind of looked at him like that. Wow, we're in, the, we're in the old bar. This is, this is beautiful. Bar. This is nice. Jack Daniels, if you please. I like my Jack Daniels. I just like whiskey in general. I prefer Crown Royal. But no, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited <laughs> about it, man. I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm gonna lose, uh, I'm gonna lose some sleep over here's that. Here's the game. thing. Here's, here's the thing that I'm, I'm interested. The creators of the game say, cause they asked him at CES, is there a way to kill Jason in the game? They said yes, but they're not telling you how. Or what has to happen? It'll be anything. online in three weeks when some Japanese kid figures it out and shares it on videogeek.com or some bullshit like that. You yeah, just want to roll the fucking scroll they'll now. Come out with a patch. I'm gonna get hot. That's fine, but the fucking Nazis. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. But you got to put the hours in though to figure it out. So right. I'm, and that's I'm the curious. beauty of it. That's what you should do. I'm curious. What I'm I don't know if you know this, uh, notice this, but they have Tommy Jarvis say, as a playable character. Nice. And, and they even they even the hired Tom one. Matthews. Come back and do the voice. Like it's it's Tommy Jarvis from Part Six. Is nice. it really? That's so, awesome. It's gonna be fun. Nice. I'm I, like I said. I'm looking forward to it. I'm not looking ass. forward to seeing you the day after with the bags and. The, uh, I know I will be. I'll, I'll it be, only I'll sucks that it's not. I don't think it's gonna be cross platform. It's the only thing that sucks. Yeah, I know. Mm. I know. I'm up so, but I got a lot of Xbox friends, so I'll, I'll be murdering them. <laughs> there you go. There you go, guys. Get your comments in now. I want to talk real quick before I get into my point. Uh, the Autism Challenge is officially closed. We want to thank everybody that donated to the cause. Woohoo! Here, I mean, here, here they are by name. Will Shabbat, Frank Sadowski, Mark Azarju, Mama Loki, Marge Pino, and Carrie and Scott Krasner. We raised a total of $320 for autism awareness. Uh, very awesome. short notice, but guys, thank you so much for putting it out there and doing your thing. Um we're, when we do this again, we'll give you a couple months lead in. We're going to pimp it. We're going to just push it. And we really want you guys to get involved. The more that we can do with your help, the show gets traction. These these charities get the traction that they need. And that's what it's all about. Like the, yeah, exactly. when we did the cancer benefit last year, which landed us in the Connecticut Hall of Honor. Now the autism thing this year. If it touches you, reach into your pocket. I want to thank Eddie also on the same vein. Um, recently there was a tragedy in his neck of the woods, and he posted the GoFundMe on our page, and he also shared it on his personal page. On my, per- all, my yeah, DJ page, did, my yeah. author page, now, my personal page. I, I got a lot of, I, I was telling you this before the mics went hot, that I got a lot of messages from friends of the show and friends of mine that said, hey, I put in this much, I put in this much, I put in this much. What was the goal? 6000 How much did they raise? Nearly 20000 last time I checked. That's Right there. Charity doesn't hurt. Charity helps, guys. Come on. No, exactly. You, it, was, it was, like I said, I, I just met the family recently. And that's I did true. Their, I did their little league uh, opener, and what a great family. And I, you know. 13 years old, really sad. Mm. No, it is. That is. It's, yeah. ins- it's insane. It's insane. You no, know, a friend of mine even... lost their child at 10. Um, this was about, I'd say, four or five years ago. And I'm, I'm friends with the mother. Uh, the mother is dating a very good friend of mine, and she still, every now and again, just talks about the daughter, and it's still fresh. The, the wound, mm-hmm. even after four years, is still fresh. Well, she'd be going into high school now. She'd be doing this now, and I get it. Well, that's and, it. And, and, especially as a parent, and I know Mike can 
sympathize with this. You certainly can sympathize with this. Uh, Wheat Wilson over here, the beer runner, he can certainly sympathize with this in a few months when his child comes into the world. There, there's no greater pain than losing a child. I need a, a new child. wheat. When, it, oh, we need a new wheat over here's here. Here's the thing. Like when, uh, when you have like an elder like relative, 80, 90 well, years to, old, you pass away, you're kind of you mentally wheat. prepare it's for expected. it for at least – the last few years doesn't it doesn't make it suck any less but it's no it's sad but it's sad but because but like when it does happen it's more of a celebration of life like oh he he she did this that and the other thing kept the family together right uh someone that young the only thing you can think about are the things the things they're not going to be able to do that's the only thing you think about and you know i've had friends although uh, it just uh going back to to morgan ross is her name um she actually got quite a bit accomplished as a kid she was doing really good with the sports and everything and and it's just really sad of what probably she could have been, but she did, no, she did, she was doing everything right. Let's put it that way. Right. And, you know, I've had friends that pass on in their thirties, um, in their forties. And to me, that's the 50 yard line of life. Yeah. You know, you have more to go. And a month. So, right. Coming up right now, I'm, I'm ready for this. Four I'm, zero. I got a new song for you this year. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Last year, what was it? Uh, you make me no. What was uh, Rod Stewart? What was the fucking song? Um, tonight, tonight's the night. Oh, but I'm gonna go a different route this time. I uh, swear to God, if you start singing, Stewart. if you start singing <laughs> like my mind is telling me no, but my body <laughs> says yes, <laughs> I'm gonna punch you. In the no need, no yeah. need. I'm gonna punch you in your Nazi dick. No, um, you know I just lost where I was going, but um. I got this letter. We got this letter. I'm not going to mention from uh, what school, what school system. Um, recently, if you guys missed it, go back on the YouTube channel in the archives. Ed and I did a fantastic video. This guy was working. You would have been a fantastic drop-in for this, but we, we were crushed for time. If you have not seen 13 Reasons Why, get your ass on Netflix and watch it. Before I read this, uh, you binge-watched it like that. Uh, what was your takeaway from it? Uh, the realism. That, that was my, yep. the, the, just the realism of the characters. Uh, I want to say the, pretty much the, the, almost the dynamics of the story. I mean, it was, it was a draw you in from day one. Did it take you back to your high school days where you saw those clicks in the, the cast system of high school? It's, you know, what's funny is like, I, I guess it's, you know, it's, man, it's, not, it's been like fucking almost 20 years. This is, you know, well, for you. Yeah, but pretty much. <laughs> I don't like to think about it. Yeah, it's 25 years actually going on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's going on 25 years. So, I mean, you know, you don't really think of it that way. And, and you do kind of think of it like, you know, when you're in work, you don't even really have that grand system anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're lucky to work in a place that has 100 people, you know what I'm saying? Then I work like, in a place with 14, so I get it. We're we're like family. That's what I'm saying. So it's there. There is no pecking order. There is no clicks. There is no like areas that you are considered you know like associate with. I'm a mechanic. That's it. You know what I'm saying? They're they're workers. That's it. That's 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 the huge difference. But other than that, man, I mean, right. well, this email letter <coughs> was dated April 29th. And it reads as follows. Dear parents, I wanted to make you aware of a Netflix series called 13 Reasons Why, which is based on a novel by the same title, authored by Jay Asher. Uh, quick fact, quick fun fact. Um, the Eternal Flame just ordered the book, and I'm getting ready to dig into it. So once again, I've added another book to my queue. I'm now four books deep, So, uh, and little Loki is just driving people nuts up in here. He just beat <laughs> Jeez. And that's what happens. Every now and again, we got to whoop that cat. But that's okay. Um, but once again, I'm four books deep now because she just bought 13 Reasons Why, and I want to read the book. I want to compare it to the series. Going on. The series is about a young girl named Hannah Baker who has committed suicide and has left 13 cassette tapes explaining the reasons she felt she needed to commit suicide. After speaking with several of my colleagues, it was felt that it's important to bring this to the attention of parents and guardians. It is felt that this Netflix series is not appropriate for middle school age children, although many of our students are watching it. Allow me to stop here. One of the first things, Eddie, as you turn your phone down. Here we go. I'm just going to wait. Here we go. Okay. Um, one of the first things upon... Is your phone seriously broken, bro? I love you, but 
fuck. Oh, you guys get comes, me on this all the time, and I asshole. get it right away. What happened? Here, here comes asshole. Oh, fuck me running. <laughs> you ain't touching my green screen. Yeah, go get him. <laughs> Ed's coming to get you, ass. You better fucking run, dick shit. See? One of the first things... Choke slam. Oh, uh, we could have got that on camera. It would have been fucking priceless. One of the first things upon hearing this is about why we this, can't have nice things. I know. Upon hearing about this we from you, need to catch Terminator. Right, Angela went three episodes before me, and when I asked her, "What do you think?" She goes, "I watched it with Madison, and Madison is eleven. She's about to be twelve at the end of the month, and she's talking with her about it now." Of course. Did Madison see the last nine? Hell no. We Dude, binge watched the shit out of that. Look, I mean, it don't, it, it, kids by this point are so, there's, we said it a million times, dude. They're numb to this shit now. I'm going to tell you something. I mean, you can sit there and you can, I, I, I'm not, I really hate to say it this way, but I mean, some of those freaking videos that we almost consider shock, most of these kids are seeing by the time they're like right. 13, 14. But let's you know consider, what I'm th- let's consider this while the school right now is saying this might not be appropriate. Do you know where I was at 12 years old on January 28, 1986? Sitting in a science class with my teacher, Mr. Lemire, with 30 other kids, with a TV in front of us, getting ready to watch Space Shuttle Challenger get launched into space. Do you know what happened 96 seconds later? Boom! Yep. Seven people are dead. What did we do? They sent us all home. We came back the next day. If you want to talk about it, you come down to the counselor. I think four people in the entire eighth grade class or seventh grade. I don't remember what grade I was in. I remember Mr. Lemire, like nobody's business. I love that guy. He's passed on now, but regardless, four people took took that offer. Yeah, that kind of disturbed me. Da, 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 da. And you know what? They grew up. They got past it. Stop yeah. desensitizing our fucking children. Extra sensitizing because there's a lot of I things agree. that desensitize them. Uh, again, I'll point to like 13 years old. Um, my friend's son plays these video games and it's slash this and kill this and cut the zombie's head off. And Dude, they're talking about the new, the desensitized. new, uh, I mean, help. We were just talking about it. The Jason game. Do you think that's going to be desensitized? No, you can literally take somebody and throw them into a fire. Right. You can literally take their freaking face and bash it into the, you know, into a tree. But, but let's, I before mean, I go on to the letter, let, let's, let's put it out like this. Video games in the last, what, it's been like 15 years have the rating system. T for teen, uh, E for everybody, uh, M plus. for mature. Yeah. Yep. How many parents give a fuck when little Johnny says, hey, I want Slash Em Up Zombies 3, and mom goes out and it's his birthday, and hey, little Johnny, here's Slash Em Up Zombies 3. And what's he doing? Cutting out, or like, fucking murder cruise ship. I made that shit up. But, you know, hey, let's go on a cruise ship. That would be Friday people. the 13th, part 8. Probably. Let's go back to the letter. There is strong language, sexual content and assault, and the glamorization of suicide that takes place. Stopping again. No, cocksucker. It doesn't glamorize suicide. This is basically a how-to of how to avoid it. I watched that series at full disclosure. Not one beer in hand. I wanted clarity. Uh, what, school, what school is this? I cannot say because um, this was given to me by a friend who has a student in that school. It's not the only one. There, there's no, been there's qu- several. I've, I've seen a few People news reports. People Magazine did a fucking yeah. expose on it in one of their fucking magazines. Not that they're any better. It's like, hey, look who Gwen Stefani's fucking this week. Stop. Just stop. Anyway. You can, you can watch fucking... Uh, what the what the hell is that? The 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 Marvel show. Did there. you ever sneak when Jessica you Jessica Jones when you were thirteen? They're when, fucking banging it. That's right. like soft porn, dude. That's a little. It's literally soft fucking porn. Right. One of the Avenger films. My man, Luke Cage is a good looking man. One of the Avenger. On. One of the recent Avenger films had the sexual tension between, I believe, it was um the Scarlet Witch or Red, whatever her name is. I'm not a big Marvel guy. Who was Scarlett Johansson's character? Oh, Black oh, Widow. Black Widow. Thank you. And is sexual tension with. Which character? Was it Banner? Well, there was palpable you thought, sexual You tension. thought it was Hawk, Hawkeye, but then it turned out to be... There's a little friends. something with Banner. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they're, they're, so you... Buddies. Again, this is... Look, I was 13, you were 13, you were 13. We were out on the playground, F this, and kiss my stuff and whatever. And how many times did you sneak a listen to like an Eddie Murphy or a Red Fox or a George Carlin tape at 13 oh, gotcha. years old? Younger than that. Stop thinking that these kids Dirty don't words, know. Man. 
cripes. They're probably Dirty using language list. worse than I, this on the bus. To play devil's advocate. Of course. We need a graphic. We need I a graphic. I told you that. We need a graphic. We need you know a graphic. what I need? I need Wheat Wilson to uh, jump up to action. And, and we're going to bring him in real quick when he's done grabbing this. He deserves some credit tonight. On the, on the 13 reasons why there... Um, I, I do think the school's overreacting. I'm not a devil's advocate in that, but I do think it might be a good show to watch with parents. Agreed. Dude, there is worse you things know. out there. There is. But I, well, I'm not saying watch it I mean, because of what's maybe, in it. Watch maybe it's, it because... Maybe it's just because of the popularity that it got that they're so... Well, yeah. You know, oh, look out for this. But I, you know... But here's the thing. I mean, let's be what, honest What's one you, of the it's... first books you read in high school? Go Ask Alice. Go Ask Alice. Uh, are which, you there, God? My opinion, Margaret. Which, in my opinion, is much worse. Much worse than 13 Reasons Why. Kill a Mockingbird. Right. You Much not, worse than 13 Reasons Why. You may not be able to see him. His shoulder just popped in. Go put your head back here. You can I'll see the hand cop- come in every once in a while. Put your head on my down. shoulder. Welcome here to the old bar. Here comes he is, Sakura. You're creating shadows. Zachariah up. King, otherwise known as Pokey. He has been Wheat Wilson for this episode. Pokey around because he didn't I need wear wheat. a I need suit. Wheat. I need wheat. Hold on. <laughs> you have to watch He's out. Get out of the shot to get you a wheat. That's You're gonna my daughter's to godfather. Watch out, motherfucker. No, but, um, That's right. I watch think out. He gets I, this. I actually <laughs> think of 13 Reasons Why as a great educational tool, to be Agreed. honest. Agreed. 100% and, agree. And it, it's something like, I wouldn't say, like, have... I wouldn't say sit your daughter down and have her watch it, but when she's a couple years older, might be, or about to go into junior high, maybe mm-hmm. yeah. sit her down, and say, "Hey, we're going to watch this show together. We're going to talk about My it." My stepdaughter right now is in junior high, has watched the first three episodes, and obviously with the start of softball mm-hmm. season, she takes drum lessons mm-hmm. and she does all this. There's not a lot of time for her to sit down and watch episodic television, regardless of if it's in demand or not. Um, but. Angela and I spoke about it at length, and it's like, this is the perfect vehicle for her to understand what happens in junior high school and in high school with the cliques, with the cash yeah, system, with all of really it. If you really break it down, that, that 13th reason why is Degrassi on cable. Oh, without question. That's all it really yeah. is, which, ironically, Netflix has a Degrassi show, which is kind of lame. But <laughs> now you see why well, they have Christ. the movie. If you it's, grew up, it's not what Degrassi used to be a boot. You weren't a teenager in it's the nineties. You'd already yet. graduated. Where you were a teenager in the nineties. Saved by the Bell. They had the uh, the most ju- of the the, 90s? the uh, speed the <laughs> yeah, speed uh, speed half. addiction episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I right. love that one. Every sitcom had that special episode the, the, where somebody oh, was wait, addicted wait, did, to this, or please somebody tell died. me you didn't bring up the Saved by the Bell episode. I did for a reason. Oh, podcasting fail. <laughs> no, podcasting fucking. It was caffeine victory. pills for one. Doesn't matter. And she she was like, I'm so excited. Hey, oh God! If she's singing a song that's eight years old and it's still in her head, and it led to God showgirls. Yes, it did. Showgirls. That's Elizabeth Berkeley's problem. Horrible, that's not mine. Man. On with the letter. However, I wish she would have showed more. I know. However, if I middle school would have just not done the movie, <laughs> that would have been a great vehicle for Demi Moore. But I'll digress. However, if middle sure, s- if middle schoolers were to watch this series, I would strongly recommend that an adult watch with them and that there is some sort of discussion slash debriefing that takes place after each episode. No shit, Sherlock. I agree with that. I agree. It would also be helpful for parents to screen it before watching it with their children. I disagree. You want that shock value. You want those questions that your kid asks you that only your kid can ask you, and that's going to be the, 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 the benchmark of your parenting. Where the kid asks you something, you're not prepared for the question, and now you really have to turn that gear on. That's just the old school. You know, that's an old school parenting thing going on. It certainly right there. is. That's... It certainly is. Uh, where was I at? Uh, this is not the type of series, series that students, especially emotionally fragile students, should be watching alone without having the chance to process what they have seen with an adult. Fair enough. Um, all of our parents tried to um, regulate what we watched. Yeah, we all snuck. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, we all snuck. We watched, you know, the movies with the boobies at 13 years old. I mean, HBO was a godsend in our in our generation. I mean, a lot of the, now it's the a lot of the, a lot of the harder stuff was was exactly that. It was hard to get. You know what I'm saying? Like you're. So, you know what? Here's the thing. Like when, like I agree with you. We used to snuck stuff. I was ordering porn mail order. So, but. When when they say we, we were taking our friends' father's VHS tapes and doing the yeah. same thing. Um, but here's the thing, like when you say, when a parent is like, 
you shouldn't watch that, and you're going to watch it anyway. Of you course. know you're going to watch it. That's the invitation. You, you, but hearing them say that, you do kind of watch it with a different set of eyes. Oh, there's something about this. I shouldn't watch it. So, like, if they say don't watch The Terminator because it's violent, and it's like, oh, God, there must be something I better about fucking this. watch that. Yeah. Right? I got to find out. But you watch out. it, though. You watch it, though, and you're like, oh, that was awesome. And what happens? But, what happens when you go to school and you tell your friends, hey, I just watched The Terminator. Oh, you're a fucking hero. The cheerleader fucks you. Right. Anyway. You know, you know, you know what did that one? It was RoboCop for me. Wow, good call. That was a violent movie back that then. Was, that, that was, was like ultra-violent yeah. back then. Actually, well, the first movie I saw like that was the first Terminator. That's the first movie I saw. And then I saw RoboCop later, and then um, I saw... A lot like, of those scenes were just visceral, you know what I'm you, saying? Like you they you were, really have to judge and gauge who your kids are before you sit right. them down in front no, of 13 absolutely. Reasons or Terminator or um, Rambo or any of those films. I mean, Cripes... My buddy's dad would sit us down and have us watch the Rambo films, and he would pick it out. Even three? Unfortunately. And, and he would pick out the scenes and go, okay, that's, that's realism. That's bullshit. This could actually happen. This is real. I've been to Afghanistan. And he would break it down for us, so we learned from it. It wasn't just watch Sylvester Stallone shoot 138 people in nine right. seconds. He broke it down. Good parenting. I'll buy it. Now, if my mother had known back in 1986 that I was doing this, she probably would have thrown a conniption. Not my fucking problem. I'm 44 now. Eat it. Um, going on with the letter. Some discussion questions to consider if watching this series with your child are, what was Hannah struggling with? We, we went over this at the beginning of the discussion, and we went over it on the bonus episode. What could Hannah ha- Who could Hannah have gone to with the struggles she was facing. If you haven't watched a series, I won't spoil it. It's tried. Just let it go. Stop fucking around with these dumb questions. I think questions. that's why they're doing it, because of, I don't want to. But if they get to 13, they'll find out. Yeah, but I think that's Fuck. why the school is writing that letter, because of I agree. the last tape. I agree. Possibly. but I think that's why, because that last tape makes she did them the, look she like fools. Did the, she did the right thing. She tried, yeah. So She did the right thing. Yeah. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Watch a series. She did the right thing. When is it important to talk about someone else's mental health and who can you talk to? I'll buy it. I'll buy it. When it, they bring it to you. Right. What message you know, did you... bring up somebody, hey, you're batshit crazy. My favorite one of, this, of all the five questions is this one. What message did you get about bullying from the series? Now, we all dealt with bullying in our youth, and how do you deal with it? You punch the fuck out of the bully. Well, nowadays, if you punch the bully, the bully stays in school, you get suspended, continued wussification of America. However, I get I get it. I get that you should talk to someone. Parents, teachers, counselors, anybody, anybody. Talk to your fucking friends. But it no, by no means, look, I, I, I can't read the rest of this letter without feeling just angry that someone is trying to dictate, once again, it's the school system trying to raise your children for you. And if you don't do right by them, you're an asshole. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I, I got so just... angry at this. And I can't believe I sat on this for two weeks. We had great things go on the last two weeks. I'm sorry I didn't bring it up. I apologize to you, the listener and the viewer. I apologize to you guys. But fuck, this is just more wussified bullshit right here. That's just, it's at this point, I'm, I'm more desensitized to that fucking shit. Right. Uh, Suicide is the third leading cause of death among adolescents and the second leading cause among college-age students. It is important to talk to kids about suicide, but in an appropriate way where they have an opportunity to process their feelings. Great point. The Society for Prevention of Teen Suicide has a great guide on how to talk to your children about suicide, and they give a link. Schools across the state have begun to see an increase of suicidal talk and plans with students and are concerned there is a connection with the Netflix series. Please take the time to talk with your children about this. Should you need support from us, our counselors, our social worker, or school psychologist, we are all trained in suicide prevention. Sincerely, Peckerhead, Jones, whatever. Look, I'm going to share something I've never shared with anybody in this room, and a lot of you guys who know me, don't know me, I don't give a shit. Um, I did have suicidal thoughts. I was 18 years old. I was... uh, Heavily addicted to drugs. I decided one night I was going to hang myself. Had to, had the whole plan. Made the mistake. The biggest mistake of all. Told my best friend, hey, man, I love you. 
but you're not going to see me tomorrow. And it led me going to rehab. And you know what? I kind of thank him for it now. But at 18 years old, I didn't thank him for it. I thought he was the biggest peckerhead on the history of the, in the history of the fucking earth. But you know what? He saved my life that night, and I thank him. And why did I do it? Because I didn't think there was a way out from drug addiction. I did not think there was yeah, a way could, for me to break like, the fuck cycle. That, man. I'm going to sleep. You're right. You're absolutely right, and I thank him. So if you're out there, Tim, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. But at the end of the day, I didn't think there was anybody to talk to because in the 80s and in the 90s, this is where I'm going to give the Wussification of America a little credit. Yes, I'm going to give the Wussification of America a little credit. We tell kids all the time there's always someone to talk to. That started sometime in the late 90s. Uh, say no and then go and tell someone and all that craziness on the TV and you can always talk to somebody. I didn't think there was anybody to talk to. But I'm still here and I'm still kicking and a lot of people aren't and I've lost a lot of good friends to suicide and it sucks. But if you got someone you can reach out to, man, reach out. The letter that I just read pissed me off and it still pisses me off because at the end of the day, it's not glorifying suicide, guys. It, that is basically a handbook on what the school system ignores, on what parents ignore, and on what people in general ignore about the high school experience. Do you guys remember a movie called Three O'Clock High? Yep. I remember it well. About a kid, he gets challenged to a fight at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. He says, at 3 o'clock, we're going to have a fight. Yep. Yeah. And he's pretty much... He's like, oh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get killed. Trying to figure out a way to get out of it. Tries it, tries to get out of it, and then toward as he goes on, though, he's like, he kind of loosens up, like even tries to seduce, he, right? He even tries seducing his teacher to get kicked out of school. It doesn't work. And uh, was it end, a good-looking teacher like Pamela Smart? Oh God, I haven't watched the movie in so long. <laughs> and then like the end of it, or was it the, like Miss Trink? The end of yeah. it, he, show, <laughs> he at the end he shows up for the fight. At 3 o'clock, he shows up for the fight. He's like, I'm going to get my ass kicked, whatever. And the principal shows up to break it up. The bully punches the principal, knocks him on the ground. And they get into a fight. Shortly before he ends up knocking the bully out, you hear the principal get up and tell the tell the kid he's getting picked on, saying, don't fuck this one up. And he ends up knocking the bully out. No shit. And I'm just like, God, we had more teachers and principals like that when it came to dealing with bullies. What, yeah. was, the, uh, what was the film with the... Uh the principal with the baseball bat. Was that Stand By Me? That was Morgan Freeman. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, it was. Was that Stand By Me? I'm not your principal. You're going to no. call me Batman. That was That's lean right. on me. Lean on me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, when, it, when it's all said and done, I've said my piece, and I, I want to hear what you guys hear. And then I got a fantastic uh, little thing here that we do every week. And uh, I apologize for hijacking a good 15 minutes no, of the show. No, I, think, man, it's, I think it's stupid because I watch a show. You watch a show. First of all, it's a great show. Mm -hmm. It's really well done. Um, there's nothing glorious about Hannah Baker's life no, in that movie no. or that if show. If I took anything away from that, like I said, it was a how-to guide to prevent teen suicide. It, 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 right. I looked at it, it's just like, well, you know, I walked away from it like, you know what, maybe I'm going to be a little bit more aware of my friends and certain things they do or say, you know. No. Um, I mean, you guys are pretty happy guys for the yeah. most part. I don't for the most part. But I, mean, like, I, can look, I can look to you guys in the room and, and, and Wheat Wilson, a.k.a. Zach Pokey King, there's not a time I can't talk to you about something, and the the, the uh, what's the famous thing is you talk me off the ledge, which yeah. only, it doesn't happen very often, but there are times you need to be talked off the ledge. Yeah. And in this situation, there were so many people, and she, and it's illustrated again. Go watch the fucking series. She could have been talked off the ledge. She could have been talked off the ledge. And you know what? After watching, uh, and we've talked about this movie before, after watching 13 is Reason Why, if you can find a copy, watch Pump Up the Volume. It deals with oh, suicide fantastic. as well. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, Heather's also deals with suicide, but that's a fucked up movie. I love my dead gay son. Yeah. That's crazy. But Pump Up the Volume actually, like, deals with suicide. And, and, um, in fact, that's, that's, uh, a lot of people, like, miss, like, uh, he got arrested over mm -hmm. that suicide. It wasn't because he was running a pirate radio station. No, but watch that movie. What a great movie, by the and way! I love. Thank that you movie. for bringing that up. That's I, my that's my favorite movie of all time. Always really? Oh, why the hell do you think I'm sitting here? Not Scarface. No. Not The Godfather. No. no. Not DC Cab. No. Not Pump Johnny, up DC Cab. Pump John, up the yeah, volume. Right? There are movies that define who you are as a person. Pump up the volume defines who I am. What does as a that person. say about me? 
in my I have a tie for number and, one. And I mentioned this before. The promo poster Mine's for Pump Pro. Up the Volume has Christian Slater standing in a bowling shirt that says Ed. Yep. So <laughs> All right. it was an omen. So yep. what does it say about me? Godfather, Scarface, Wizard of Oz. I'm walking down the yellow brick road said, shooting what? motherfuckers and selling cocaine. You know what? Those are, those are classic, though. That's just like saying, oh, my favorite movie is Star Wars. Fuck you. Okay, if I had What's to- your favorite movie? What mm-hmm. movie speaks to you? I don't care if it's The Last Unicorn. You're going to have you know, to give fucking- me a time on that because to, to me, it's still Scarface and The Wizard of Oz. Those speak to me on different levels. They, they're the ones they I can go well, to but... over and over again. And like, you're right, they're classics. If I had, if I had an outside film, Johnny Dangerously. It, it's kind of like if someone says, oh, who's your favorite rapper? And you say Eminem and Jay-Z. It's like, no, 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 take them out of it. Who are your favorite rappers? Easy you know? yep. and Ice T. They'd be in my top five, you know. But it, it's like there are certain people like, yes, okay, Eminem, Jay-Z are the here greatest. Come, here comes my next challenge. You know, if, someone, if someone can find me the first Body Count album that includes Cop Killer... I don't care if you burn it onto a CDR, please. I got. I'll, I'll trade you anything. I'll you trade can you get my the kid. single. I think. I'm sure I could find that somewhere. Yeah, for hundreds. I'm sure I could find it. No, I think Ice T still gives it away at his concerts. Wow, no shit. Because when he took it off the album, says I'll give it away at the concerts. Okay, but I won't. I'll have to find out where he's album. playing. Their last couple albums have been great. I mean, they should be the national anthem, it motherfuckers. Sh- well, see here we should go be again. bitches. Just kidding. Don't don't tell our friend that. Anyway, so before we uh, go into your exciting thing, real quick, what do you got? Um, you do, do you still read the uh, the Walking Dead comics? I haven't in a while. I want to start collecting the books. Yeah. Uh, so did you did you hear did you hear the news? No. This, this could affect uh, this could affect the actual the, the show itself. If Daryl dies, we riot, and you <laughs> can get a shirt that says that yes, at mytvstore dot com. Yes, go to lokiandjabroni dot com. Yes, you can. That's a great shirt. Are they, are they no, an affiliate? Forget. Uh, my, uh, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go there and get shirts, uh, shirts and sweatshirts, costumes of your favorite shows. Nice. Walk, they have a whole walking deadline. Well, Daryl, nice. don't forget, it's not in the comics. I know, I know. However, although Andrea is dead in mm-hmm. that world, she's very much alive in this world, and she is Michonne. Well, she bone, yeah, she's bone and Rick, isn't she? Yeah, she, uh, but she's also a sharpshooter. She's, she's pretty much holding them together. Don't forget, Rick's missing his hand and, and, you know, and pretty much she's like the mother to, uh, to, uh, what's, uh, Coral. 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 Um, well, she died. They, uh, they killed her off. She was, she was bit in a rescue picking up, uh, mullet boy Eugene and they, uh, they ended up killing her off. Wow. So I was like fucking shocked, and at the same time, at the end, at the end of it though, you know what's crazy is he ends up writing a, a little speech. It's like a, a paragraph and a half about how much he said at any given moment he could have stopped this. After all, it's his, it's his series. You know what I'm saying? But in, ultimately, he decided to keep it going to kind of like. Because that's where the story is. He's he's bigger than the story is now. You, you ever wonder if like Andrew Lincoln in his trailer like kicks his feet up, lights a cigar, and says, "I'm the only one with any fucking job security yeah. around nice. here." Nice, <laughs> nice. At this fucking point, dude, I'll tell you what, man. I'll tell you what, because I'm just thinking at this point, if they're gonna kill off, and then it does. It it brings back, it brings back that whole, you know. People aren't invincible in that. It is. It is very much a survival story, and anybody can go at any given moment. The only thing with the show, though, at this point, the only way that show could shock people right now is if they went a whole season without killing someone. Right? If they went a whole season without killing a main character, I'd shit myself. I don't watch the show. They they would probably be sitting there for like, okay, who's next? Why why, why, why did they they not shoot anybody? Yeah. If they ended a season on like a happy go lucky Christmas episode, right? Or some I, I, shit. I, I, I knew pe- I know people who watch that show, and we'll go back to Sons of Anarchy real quick because I had people that I worked with at PCC who were big Sons of Anarchy fans, and I would I went in the next day. I was sitting with someone who actually watched the show, and nothing happened. It was your run of the mill middle of the season episode, and I walked up to my buddy Damien. I was like, "Oh fuck, did you see Sons last night?" Oh, you started watching? Yeah. No, I didn't. Oh, shit. Opie died, and then this happened, and I just started running characters like, Oh, fuck. Goes home after work, speeds his TiVo, and I get a text message. You cocksucker. None <laughs> of that shit happened. I'm like, just wanted to make some conversation. Wanted yeah, to get you all riled up. Just wanted to have fun with you. 
Uh, one of the things I have to ask you as a comic collector is how long before the, and it's probably already happened, but to your knowledge, when do they start getting like the graphic novel sized Walking Dead's like they did with the oh, long they have Halloween? Them they do. Or, they're, they're like this. Yeah. They, they're, yeah. I think they, they actually, you can get a, for a hundred bucks, there's a hardcover omnibus. Which is a of the like, series or of like offshoots like the Long Halloween, the Killing Joke, oh, oh, the Death in the Family. No, 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 like it, that. it's the oh, Walking the whole, Dead yeah, comic. It's yeah. whole, okay, it's the whole shit. Um, like a bang. like a consortium of all of them. The well, compendium. I'm there's sorry, different, compendium. Well, there's different. There's there's the shorter compendiums, and then there's the longer ones. The omnibus, like uh, they have, there's not as many issues, but they have all the covers. All the uh, I think like the in the one shots, promotional one shots. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, other background stuff than the, the oh, cheaper believe me, ones. I've been like, thinking about getting up for the collection right. anyway, just and, and, because I love it's. It's a great series, and it's a series on fire, and it hasn't. The fire hasn't gone out. People are still clamoring for Walking well, Dead. It was funny. Anything. Yeah, it was funny because I think Kirkman ended up getting a lot of flack for killing off Andrea. And at first, I was like, I was pretty shocked at, it, but I was like, I wasn't like necessarily pissed at him. I was like, you know, this is. Aside from realism, Rick, she was like what probably the second longest character, at right? That point. Exactly. So I mean, and even Dale freaking, was Dale's gone. Yeah, Dale died later in the comic, right? In the show, Dale was or yeah. Dale was around the same time because you now he was by the he was by the farmhouse. Man, he went early because it was really. I thought he Dale, died. I thought he died earlier in the show because the actor was upset that they fired. Um, Dale was supposed to get the katana like Tyrese got in the comic. Well, actually, I'm sorry. The opposite happened there. Or no, Herschel. I'm sorry. Herschel got that. I'm thinking Herschel. Yeah. My bad. Okay. I'm thinking Well, Herschel, Herschel always got killed by the governor, I thought. <laughs> yeah. No, Herschel did. Herschel did, regardless. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're going you're to make me like go to the bookstore and read back. Do it. I, I do have do to grab it. the big Reading one. I, I, awesome. I fucking read these in the bookstore. I never buy them. I just read them. Oh, what do you think I do with the Batman graphic <laughs> novels? I'll stand while, while Angela and the girls are walking around looking at books. What am I doing? I'm in the fucking graphic novel section. So, uh, speaking of up. comics. Uh-oh. Speaking of comics, I don't know if it's confirmed. It's a rumor mill, but how do you feel about The Rock being DC's Captain Marvel, Shazam? I heard about that. I can't say I disagree. No, Rock is uh, Black Adam. Oh, that's right. Rock He's is Black, Black Adam. Adam. I oh, like that. Oh, that's I right. Like oh, him Black, as Black Adam, Adam. I buy it. Yes, I like. I'd him buy as him Black as Adam. Black Adam. I'd buy him as Cyborg. I would buy him as the funny Captain thing Marvel. Is, the funny thing is, I don't think the Rock understands who Black Adam is. No, probably not. Because yeah, he was pretty. He was, if you if you follow his tweets, he was talking Black Adam. He was like, "This world needs a hero," and it's like, um. Like I Black Adam I, I, isn't even like an anti-hero buddy. Like how about Joe Manganiello as Deathstroke? I can almost buy that. Uh, I can almost. I'm not buy too that. pissed off about that. I'm like, uh, I'm not, not. Who I would have look? Picked. I was the right. guy that I was the guy that um, pissed on. They're Thomas doing Hardy Brolin as, for fucking right? for Cable. I was the guy that pissed on Thomas Hardy as Bane. I was the guy that pissed on Jared Leto as the updated Joker. Love both characters. I well, here's the thing: I wasn't sure about Bane in general because I had a, well, I still had a bad taste in my mouth, but from Bane and Batman and Robin, I liked Bane. Well, yeah, when, I didn't. Then, the movie was shit, but I like I like Bane. I thought he was. A good we character. still have disagreements about the Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> Dark Knight Rises was a decent film, not a good film, not a great film, not a fantastic I film. It was it was, a, I thought it was great. I thought it was fine. If like, I got fucking insomnia, the only thing that, the only thing that I bothers fucking me, fucking Dark Knight Rises, and I am. Out, dude. Out. O U T. Before the only thing Robin I don't even like gets introduced. Oh, in the is, in the first is. one. <laughs> I'm talking about Dark Knight Rises. If That's I, what I said if before I even Robin me, even gets introduced. Oh, you mean I call yeah with the bag and the yeah right right. See, for me it's Batman. <laughs> Joseph <laughs> Gordon Levitt. Yeah, for me it's Batman Begins. I'll watch that one and fall asleep. But like uh, Dark, I, I thought Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises were good. I liked them. And the only thing I didn't like was the 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 scam with the the stock market there yeah can't happen and, but it's only cuz i know things that bothered me but yeah. you know things yeah if if anybody hijacks a, the the stock trade all all trades become that for the whole day become invalid there's a funny story when i was sitting in the theater watching that film i told my girlfriend at the time that shit will never happen they'd have shut that fucker down the minute the first gun went off everything gets shut off yeah but no, they continue. Oh, that's us. You imagine if like, like throw realism in movies. 
Imagine if you're that one guy that just spent like all his life savings and threw it into a stock, and then you just got like, you're like, oh my god, we're like a three billionaire, yes! And all well, that's, of a sudden, a, that's someone who gets a nice boom, email. All freaking trades have been and transacted. The, there is like, the funny thing too. Let's say, let's yeah. say that did work. Let's say that did work. Um, uh, Bruce Wayne would still be a senior stockholder. Yeah. Right. So they wouldn't have been able to kick him off the board no matter how bad things went. Right. Because all he would have to say was the stock, mar- the stock market was robbed. That's not my fault. Yeah. The minute that was compromised, I'm all good. Yeah. So that, that that's the only problem I have with that movie. But the rest of it, I thought was great. Yeah. I'm yeah. looking. Um, Tom Garden, Hardy was fantastic. The fight scenes were fantastic. Guardians of the Galaxy came out. Haven't seen it. Haven't looking seen it. forward to it this weekend. I'm taking the Eternal Flame to see it. It's gonna be. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be really. I, good. I'm. I want to see that. I'm prioritizing Alien Covenant though. I'm taking Ooh. myself to see that movie. I heard bad things, man. I heard really bad things. I've heard yes. nothing but great things about Guardians too. No, no, no. Alien. Covenant. Oh, Covenant. Okay. No Guardians. I've heard great things about Alien Covenant. I have heard bad things about. Hmm. No, don't tell me. I don't yeah, want to hear it either. Don't, I don't, don't want to hear it. I like, I like Prometheus. It was, it, it got you thinking. So if, yeah. depends on where this goes. If this ties in both of the movies and makes it perfect, then I'll say Prometheus is good. If they fuck me in the brain again and it, and, de- and see, it here's goes the, nowhere. If this movie does well, if this movie does de- well, well or decent or whatever, um, director, producer, Neil Walking camp sounds um, good. He well, that's his name. He actually has an outline for an um, Alien Five. Oh, great! And um, if there's success, he does it. If there's not, he cans it. He's like, well, fuck he, you. He was in pre-production, and then Ridley uh, Scott was like, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a sequel of Prometheus." Um, and Ridley Scott is, I think Ridley Scott might even be producing it, and he's like, "Let me do this movie because they work together, so the stuff would." wouldn't step on each other's toes. And it's like hmm. um, Sigourney Weaver saw what he's playing and is on board. Michael Bean, who plays Hicks, is on board. Yeah. He's totally playing on retconning Alien 3 and 4. Um, So it just didn't happen. Right. But um, – and um, some of the some of the pre-sketches he's been doing has been really, really, really good. And so I'm hoping this movie does well so he gets to do his movie and then we'll get, finally get a sequel to Aliens – that we deserve. We deserve. Alien, right. Alien 3 was terrible. Yes. Alien 4 was worse. Yes. I don't want to talk about Alien vs. Predator we, because I'll throw this And we around. kept watching. Don't do it. Don't do it. And we kept watching because we were just hoping right. and hoping. Well, the Alien vs. Predator wishing, thing pisses me praying. off because we saw the comics. The Alien vs. Predator comics were great. They were oh, fantastic. Yeah, There's dude. so much great material they could have pulled from and – and they pulled some carbon fucking copied pyramid fucking bullshit. frozen in the ice. Fuck out of here. And totally, here. totally inconsistent with the alien movie. You know what's worse than that? 80s hair band music. Let's give it up to Jet Boy. Or let's give it up to Europe real quick. Europe? Europe. Europe. You remember that song? The Final Countdown? That's the one. Well,. Why just listen to it? I got you guys tickets. Let's do it. Yay! Let's do it. Wow, you guys enjoying the show? I'm loving it. It's Front awesome, row for your baby. baby. That is fucking awesome. And, and your heads just hit Mike. Did it? <laughs> Shit happens. Look at that. You're playing right behind us. This is badass. So, ladies and gentlemen, this... Is your top ten list for the week? Um, last year around this time, we did a Mother's Day episode, and this yeah. Sunday, depending on if you're sitting with us live via the magic of video on Monday, or you're listening to us on Saturday, Sunday is Mother's Day. Make sure you go out and tell your mother how much you love her. Maybe you buy her a little gift. Maybe you make a charitable na- donation in her name. Maybe you go mow her lawn. You do whatever you got to do. Let your mom know how much you love her, and for what it's worth, mom. Love you to death. And these guys are doing the same thing right now. I stopped by and saw my mom. So, If moms got together and made a CD and started a singing group, a la the Partridge Family, the Brady Bunch, the Monkees, etc., they'd have a lot of great song titles. They'd be the mums. They'd be the mums. I like it. 
These are the top ten songs on the Mom's Greatest Hit CD, and I'm going to lead out. There's no honorable mention this week. Number ten. I swear to God, I do all the fucking work in this house. Number nine. As long as you're under my roof, you'll live by my rules. Number eight. If your friends set themselves on fire, does that mean you should too? Ed's Ed's nodding his head. That's a long... Number seven. Am I, am I talking to myself here? That sounds like a Ed's good song. Ed's heard that one before. That That's like, an Italian mom thing right Yes, like, it is. That sounds like a good song. Number six. By the count of three, I want this mess cleaned up. Magically. Right. <laughs> Number five. Because I said so. Number four, I'm not everyone else's mom. I'm your mom. Yeah. You've heard that one, haven't you? Number three, you won't it's leave. It's probably too bad, too. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these kids, what the fuck? I agree. Number three, you won't leave this table until your plate is clean. Did anybody hear that other than me? You won't leave this table until the plate is clean. Never heard that. I made not the dinner. Lot. You're going to eat it? Uh, no, yeah, yeah. Okay, you've heard but I've always, I've I've always. just heard eat it or starve. And that's pretty much the same yeah. thing. That's on the bonus track. That's number, like, fucking 11 right there. That's the P. Diddy remix. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> number two, I don't care how hot you are, I said put on a jacket. It was 90 fucking degrees, Mom. You made me put on a jacket to go play kickball. That's bull crap. That's why I weighed four pounds until I was 13 years old. Yeah. And number one. Stop crying before I give you something to cry about. Let's How the fuck is that logic? Cry about. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> How the fuck is that logic? Stop it's crying always, before I give you something to cry about. It's always been logic. That's been passed down for generation to generation. Eons. Yeah, we don't have that now. It's Eons. like, are you crying? Let me talk to you. You're so wonderful. Horse shit. I got to go, go, go to your room if you're going to cry. Guys, uh, while we got your attention, <laughs> Please, make sure you guys up. go to the website. Mr. <laughs> uh, Eddie I Fuckus over guy. here did some great job. I hate her. I hate her. I hate her. He's got <laughs> all of our affiliates like nicely done up now. And that's it. It's, it's, it's user friendly. Yes. It's app friendly. If you go on there with your smartphone, you won't get the jizzles. You'll know what the hell is going on. Use your gimmick on. phone and go to www.lokiandjaboni.com forward slash sponsors. And find out all the great places where you can buy things and help the show at the same and time. And be a part. WWE is being awesome, even though they took away oh, our live see, feed. I was going to shit on WWE, but you kind of just <laughs> that's praised what I said. them. They're, no, no, They're I the said, ones that are paying us the most. So. Pretty that's much. Why I, that's why I said I, WWE is being on the chin. awesome, even though they, you know. They, hey, listen, Vinny. They had us signed up for some bull crap. Vinny, Paul. Not, not Vinny Paul from Pantera, <laughs> but Vince. And Paul, Triple H and Mr. McMahon, listen, the next time we do a gig, try not to kick us off. Because That's all we're saying. We're trying to help you get business. You're trying to help us get business. Right. Why don't we work together? together. I'll wear a yellow fucking blazer and go, welcome everyone to whatever fucking building we're in. Yeah. Which could be, if rumor has it right, Upper Deck in Westbrook for Summer Slam. Which I'm looking forward to. Gonna be a great beer, night. Beer and wings, right? Uh, beer and wings. So uh, I heard beer and wings. Speaking of wings, I had the greatest wings of all time the other day. Really? From Bidwell Tavern. The, they always do great wings. Oh, big ups to them. Big ups to them. If you're in the Connecticut area and you need a place to go, put it on your little fucking gimmick device and find Bidwell's Tavern and go have the wings. I like the sesame ginger. They do a great job. What was your favorite? I know you tried we had, like seven thousand. We we just did three. We did uh we did the mild buffalo because mm-hmm. we always gotta try the buffalo. Of we course. did the smoked um uh, smoked hickory barbecue. Um, and uh, what was the other one? Oh my god, it was so good though. Crap! It was crap flavored. Crap is. Surprising. Yeah, it's really. good. Uh, that another was sound crap. Like something I would be enjoying. Another was crap. It was sweet though. I can't remember what the hell it was called. Though. Sweet onion chicken teriyaki. Sweet uh, crap. I, I made. That. I got to look at the menu. I can't remember, but sweet they got crap. like thirty freaking varieties of wings. Was it Nazi crap? It could have been Nazis. Oh God! Here but we go. Again. Not really. I got a special giveaway next week, and you guys are gonna have to work for this motherfucker. And I'm going to tell this guy and this guy about it when we go off microphone. 
That's oh, also, don't forget. Code w, for Nazi. W, seriously? Somebody get Lincoln? No, oh, wait. That gimmick's over. www.patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. Donate to the show. The more you give, the better we can give to you. Without you, there is no us. Matter of fact, we're, we're coming up on a new shirt design. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I'm still waiting for uh, my First favorite shirt. First one's coming out. First one's coming out. I have to pick up the ink this week. And big ups to <laughs> Max Kalinowski. I don't, I don't remember if we mentioned it last week, but second time, decimated. I know. The Ghost Wing Challenge in front of us. That video is still up. That was is it? On Facebook. Yes. I, I videotaped him eating those wings on yeah, my Facebook. I saw that. Share that with that. the page. They need to see that. Yeah, they'll take that away. The best part like, about, bastards. Best part about that was, and he was glad, he was very thankful to Angela for taking the picture of Shane Douglas coming up and go, dude, I couldn't have done it. You're the man. Yeah. What a nice fucking guy. Seriously. Yeah. Like, ser- Look, I was never a big Shane Douglas fan. I liked his work in the ring. Didn't like his character. That guy was so cool yeah. throughout that whole hell, night. Hell to hell you, dude. to me, to him, to everybody. Shane Douglas is a fucking class act. Absolutely. Although you could have you could have had a drinking game with how many times he was shaking his head at that pay per view. Like, oh, oh yeah, oh, oh without question. Like, like, oh, Shane Douglas shaking his head. When I went over and talked to him terrible. about one particular, if match. you were me and Loki, you wouldn't have gotten drunk on the twenty four dollar margarita that no. had a and no see, alcohol. In this it. is why Patreon no. donors are afraid to donate was, because yeah, they think bad. that they think that the money they give is going into margaritas. No, that was out of their pocket, guys. That was out of their pocket. They paid for the margaritas. Don't, mm-hmm. don't, don't think we're we got a beer budget here. No, yeah, we trust wish. me. If we're gonna have a margarita budget, we're having Loki make the margaritas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, pretty much. At least with make top with top shelf liquor. At he least makes a pretty mean fucking, fucking margarita. Happy. That's what right. I'm talking about. But all right, guys. So we love you all very much. Please make sure you go see the hard work that he threw into that because it does. It looks really good. If you guys haven't had a chance to check it out, all of our affiliates are right there. I like. Boom. Easy to grab. Easy to check out. If you have any questions, just come on. Leave a little comment in the section or meet us on Facebook and leave us a message there. Or follow us on Twitter I at Loki and Jabroni. Too, uh, I should mention, too, I did fix uh, the episode guide where you, it is a lot easier to listen to episodes on the website. Right. Um, you can find your favorite episodes and re-listen to them if you want. More That's episodes cool. More like episodes that. are going up every week, and Ed deserves a lot of credit uh, the Laritz episode, the Microcardi episode, Bill Starkey's first appearance here. Mm-hmm. Um, Kiss Army. Oh yeah, and we're getting to we're getting to the point where we where I'm putting out the back catalog, and we're doing some bonus episodes for you too. Just uh, you know, talk about anything. There you might know. be another one yeah. soon where the three of us get together well, like via dissect, the magic of dissect another TV show. It's not going to be Definitely. the John Bonet gimmick because that was bullshit. John Bonet. I didn't hate it. <laughs> I absolutely fucking hated John it. Bonet, it. And when you sent gay. that to me, I, I, I couldn't help but tell you how much I hated that. What do you want to do? The Rodney King one? No, uh, that, was, that, was, that was close, v, but not as V, The Return. Bad. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> v, The Return. I love it.